Happy New Year, everyone. I wanted to start 2013 off with a very important webinar called Five Steps to Transform Your Purpose and Your Passion into Profits. And I wanted to kick the year off with this particular webinar because people are always asking me how I got started in business, what inspired me to start my first business at nine years old, and how I kind of got on this serial entrepreneurship trip. And what are some of the things that have really helped me to be successful, in, whether it's my television career, my sportscasting career, my sales career, my career as a CEO of, of several companies, what is it that actually has been the secret sauce? So before we kind of get into that, which I'm going to be doing a, a series of webinars over the next year, before we get into that, I thought it was important that we kind of talk about whether you are currently an entrepreneur or an aspiring entrepreneur or you're moonlighting, you, you're working in a day job and you have aspirations of one day leaving that job and doing your own thing, or you're in the middle of being an entrepreneur and, and you're just kind of figuring out where you want to go and how do you take your company and your businesses, your empire to the next level. Passion and purpose are always good places to start when you're talking about business enterprise. And so I wanted to kick this year off so that we can kind of all get recalibrated on what it is that we want to do and the impact that we want to have not only in our communities, but the global community as a whole on the planet. So first of all, who am I? Those of you who have not attended my events, my seminars, those kinds of things, I'm Fran Harris. You may remember me from the Good Morning America Advice Guru Contest last year where I bested over 15,000 applicants to become a Final Four finalist for the Good Morning America Advice Guru Contest. That was lots of fun. Thank you for your, for your votes and your enthusiasm and your support. That was very, very uh, inspiring in terms of what I want to create and just having the opportunity to go through that seven, eight, eight month contest on a national stage was really eye-opening on a lot of levels. So I'll share some of that with you in a future webinar. I've also appeared on the Today Show as a life, business, and marketing coach over the last two years. A couple of years ago, I appeared on Cavuto on Fox Business Channel when I was analyzing the presidential campaign of then Senator Barack Obama's presidential bid for the Democratic uh, Convention. I have, I have my own show on HGTV called Home Rules. Thank you. Those of you who sent me notes about missing that show, I missed that show, which was a, uh, a show about transforming not only your house, but also transforming your life. I've appeared on CNN, ESPN, Comedy Central, uh, The Jay Leno Show, tons and tons of television. My favorite show is no longer on the air. CNBC is the big idea. But those of you who know me know that I've had a 20 plus year career as a television personality and mostly as a business and life coach on the national stage. So that's who I am. And one of the things that I've really been inspired by, I love entrepreneurs. I love people who just take ideas, just say, hey, there's something missing in the marketplace and I'm going to start it. So I'm the CEO of actually four companies, uh, Fran Harris Enterprises, which is a multimedia publishing and uh, event marketing company, which also houses my basketball company, which empowers girls and boys to uh, pursue higher education through the vehicle of basketball, which has been very important in my life. I was a member of the University of Texas First uh, NCAA championship team, only NCAA championship basketball team. Also was a member of the Houston Comets first WNBA championship team. So sports have played a really important part in my life. My other company, Kabuya, which we started in 2011, which is a business and marketing services company that caters to mid, some startups, some solopreneurs, mid-major companies, if you will, helping them with search engine optimization, WordPress blogs, app development, mobile marketing. Very excited to have started that company last year and uh, look forward to continuing the, the amazing growth in those industries as well. I launched a magazine five years ago called Collegepreneur, which was the first national personal business and professional development magazine for college age students. We spun off that magazine, that project to start the college ad agency, which basically the, the log line for the college ad agency is if you want to get in front of college students, then our agency is the agency to help you do that. Collegepreneur is relaunching in 2013. We are positioning that for a major sale in the next 12 to 18 months. Uh, so that's Collegepreneur. And then I started a nonprofit organization in 2002 called Families of Incarcerated Loved Ones because my family had been 
impacted by the devastation of having someone go to prison. And it was it was very devastating for our family. And rather than just kind of sitting back and wondering, how does your family kind of deal with that kind of situation? I started a nonprofit organization uh, 11 years ago. We are repositioning uh, families of incarcerated loved ones to kind of tie in a little bit more with my sports background. So we're relaunching that this year and it's called Hoop for the Cure. So you'll be hearing more about that. So that's kind of me in a nutshell. I've got about 15 or 20 surrogate children <laughs> all over the globe and am very committed to mentoring folks in my family as well as folks who are not in my family because I know that the reason I've been able to be successful not only in business but in life is because I always had a village around me helping me, mentoring me to make the right decisions. So that's kind of my spiel and we're going to get right into the webinar. So follow your passion and the money will follow. Most of us have heard that to the nth degree. Follow your passion and the money will follow. Well, let me tell you, that is a false truth. Most of you listening and watching this right now know that it is a false truth. You can follow your passion. The money may not necessarily follow. I understand the premise of that, which is do what you love is another way people say do what you love and the money will follow. But passion and love have never paid my mortgage ever. At some point I had to do something. So the first thing I want to do is kind of abolish this thought that if you just get in touch with what you love to do and get in touch with your passion, that at some point you'll, you'll be able to uh, reap the benefits financially. Not necessarily. If you don't do the right things to put you in position to turn that passion and that purpose into profit, you will never see that. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is to forget what you've heard about doing what you love, and the money will follow, following your passion and the money will follow. It's false. It's false advertising. Unless you are willing to get off your butt and do something, you will always be that person who just had a great idea or who really wanted to change something about the world and never did it. All right. So profit is defined as the difference between the purchase price and the costs of bringing whatever it is to market. All right. The difference between the purchase price and the cost of bringing it to market. That's the business sense of what profit is. But for the purpose of what we're talking about today, I'd like you to think about profit as the difference between the price you paid. In other words, your efforts and the impact you had as a result of nurturing your passion and embracing your purpose. All right. The difference between the price you pay, that's nothing more than your blood, sweat and tears and the impact you had as a result of nurturing your passion and embracing your, your purpose. All right. So though there will be people who are very interested in the profit, the money making, the business aspects of profit. There's nothing wrong with that. We all need money to be able to live, to pay for food, to pay for where we live, to support the things that we love to do. But the reality is that profit can be seen in a lot of different ways. And I'd love for you to think about it as there will be an impact of what you do, what your contributions are to this planet. Okay. The price you pay, the efforts you make, those kinds of things, and the result of those efforts. All right. That's profit. People typically fall into four categories. One, they have no passion. Two, they have no clue about their purpose. Three, they may know what they're passionate about and have a clue about their purpose, but they are too afraid to do anything about either of them. And four, they have the knowledge. They know what they're passionate about. They know what their purpose is, but they don't have a plan. All right. So four categories, no purpose, no passion, too afraid to do something about it, or you don't have the plan. Before this day is over, before this webinar is over, we're going to carve into some of those so that you can at least get to a different place with regard to your purpose and your passion. So my five step plan for you today is very simple. Get real, step one. Step two, get serious. Step three, get committed. Step four, get started. And step five, get paid. Okay? It never goes out of order. The first thing you got to do is get real. Then you get serious. Then you get committed. Then you can get started. And then you'll get paid. All right? Step one, get real. The first thing you got to realize is where are you today? Where are you? Are you the person with no passion? Are you the person with no purpose? Are you the person who's got passion and purpose but no plan? Where are you today? OK, 
okay? Get real about where you are today. There's no shame, no judgment about it. Doesn't matter if you've known forever what you should be doing. If, you, if you're one of those people who's known for the past 25 years that you are a teacher, but you were too afraid to give up your corporate job because how in the hell are you going to feed your family off of a $32,000 um, salary? Whatever it is, get real about it. If you know that you are in a, you're completely in ill-fitted, in an ill-fitted situation with your profession or even in your personal relationship, if you are not where you're supposed to be, that's okay. That's where you are today. I just need you to get real about it. Okay? Where are you today? Get real. I may never meet you, but this is the first step towards turning that purpose and that passion into profit. All right? I'm assuming that you're watching or listening to this because you want something different in your life. I do not believe in accidents. I think there is divine intervention <laughs> at work at all times. Some of this stuff we may never see or know, but you did not arrive at this page, on this website, what, however you got here, by accident. So you're watching this because you want something different in your life. You're curious. I, I'm smart enough to know that there are people who are actually listening to this who are kind of wanting to see what I'm up to. That's cool. But you got to get real about where you are. Where are you today? And what is it that you want to be different in your life? Are you willing to do the things to make you get to that place? All right. Step two, get serious. And so in a, in a, in a phrase, if you will, in a word, there can be no more excuses. You got real. Now it's time to get serious. No more excuses. That's hard for most of us because we are so married to our excuses and we got lots of them, right? Uh, if you're looking for a transformation with your body or your health or your fitness, you got tons of excuses always. You got, well, the weather's bad. I live in the Northeast. I don't have the right shoes. I don't have a workout partner. You got tons of excuses. If you're going to do this, there can be no more excuses. All right? Let's talk about the top four excuses that folks have. Money. When you're talking about turning your passion and your purpose into profit, the first thing people say is, well, I don't have the money for this. How am I going to do this? All right? Let's think about some of the things that have happened in this world where people didn't have money. The greatest change, the highest level of impact has happened with people who just got off their asses and did something, right? We're coming up on the anniversary of the of MLK, of Martin Luther King, Dr. Martin Luther King. Think about the movement that was started in the 60s. Sure, it may have taken some money. It may have had a, a huge financial impact on people. But for the most part, it was about people getting off their assets and just doing something because they wanted a change. It had nothing to do with money. Well, some of you are saying, okay, that's fine, Fran, but I want to start this company and it's going to take some money. Okay, well, then there is a way to get to that place, but there's a way to do something before you need the money. See, a lot of people have this all or nothing kind of mentality like, well, it's going to take $65,000 to start my company. And since I don't have $65,000 right now, well, I guess that's the end of that. No. There are things you can do along the way. There are steps you can take along the way to get to that place. And what you'll probably find out is that the $65,000 that you thought you needed to start your company, you really don't need that. You only need $32,000 to do it. And somebody over in wherever place, XYZ USA, is willing to partner with you to kind of defray some of those costs. That's my point. Once you start moving in the direction of what you want, people show up. Circumstances line up to make sure you get what you want. So money is never a real excuse. It's never a real objection to success. All right? That's excuse number one. Number two, time. I don't have the time. You've heard it a million times. We all got the same number of hours, same number of minutes in a day. Somehow, some way, some of us are very productive. Somehow, some way, some of us manage to get more done in two hours than most people get done in two months. Time is not an excuse. What you need to figure out is how am I going to invest a little bit more time into something that I want that's going to move me closer to what I want and a little less time into the things that are not getting me closer to what I want. Again, some people are very all or nothing. If I can't spend five hours building my business and I'm not going to do anything, wrong way to approach it. You'll never get there. No wonder you haven't done it. Time is not an excuse. 
figure out how much time you are willing to invest in your passion, in making your purpose a reality. How much time are you willing to invest to do it? All right, next excuse. Connections. Well, I don't know anybody. Well, to do this, I had somebody tell me the other day, I really do want to break in the business. I want to talk to you about breaking into the entertainment business, but I don't know anybody. Well, it's a phone call away. Call somebody who knows somebody. Get better at your craft and people will start to know who you are. A lot of times, again, people want all or nothing. If I'm breaking, if I want to be an actor, I need to know who Halle Berry's agent is. No, you don't. You need to get better at what you do. You need to become a better actor. If you can become a master or even just better at what you do, the connections will start to find you. That's the way it works. That's how it works. When we, I'm the co-founder of the Black Millionaire Summit. When we did the first Black Millionaire Summit in 2008, we were trying to figure out who the speakers were going to be for that event. And it ended up being some really powerful folks who spoke at that event. And we were trying to figure out if we wanted to have a celebrity there. And I thought, okay, it might be cool to have somebody there. And who is an entrepreneur who's known in the community as, as an entrepreneur? So we thought of Russell Simmons. Well, frankly, I don't, I didn't know Russell Simmons, but here's what I do know. And listen very carefully to this. Everybody's got something that they're passionate about. So what I did was I did a little research. I said, what is Russell passionate about? What really pulls at Russell Simmons's heartstrings? What is he passionate about? So I did some research, found out about his, his passion for Africa and entrepreneurship and, emp and empowerment and financial literacy. That's what he's passionate about. So I approached him. I picked up the phone and just called his company. It was that simple. All right. What is he passionate about? Here's something that he can align himself with that he is passionate about. Right. And then you have to figure out what it's going to cost to get there. But a lot of people, again, they figure, how in the world am I going to get Russell Simmons? How in the world am I going to get uh, Beyonce to come to this? How in the world? Figure out what these people are passionate about. Will there be a price tag? Most likely. But guess what? All we did was to say, okay, we've got Russell Simmons coming to town. Well, if we have to pay for this, my, my co-founder and I, we have to pay for this. We'll pay for it. But there ought to be a way, based on what Russell Simmons is passionate about and the fact that he's a high-profile celebrity in the business community, there ought to be a way to get some business sponsors to do this. You guys see where I'm going with this. Connections come because you're doing something that gets people's attention. That's why connections get there, right? And then somebody's willing, then, then Russell Simmons is, is willing to introduce us to this person and willing to introduce us to this person. That's how it happens, okay? So it's never an excuse. You have to be willing to say, all right, I have something worthy here. I have something that is important here. I have something that is of great value to society or to the community or whatever it is you're working on. And people will be attracted to it. People will gravitate to it because it is worthwhile. All right. Fourth excuse. Well, I don't know how to do it. Someone told me something really, really important a long time ago. The difference between you and where you want to go, a person who's doing what you want to do, is only two things. There's only two things that stand between that. It's either they know something you don't know or they are doing something you're not doing. Let me repeat that. Knowledge cannot be an excuse because whatever you want in your life starting in 2013, 2013, you are just two choices away from it. The person who's doing it or who has it either knows something you don't know or they're doing something you're not doing. That's it. If, you're, if your deal is to lose weight in 2013, then you've got to do the necessary things to lose weight. If your deal in 2013 is to build a multi-million dollar business or forget that, build a, an extra $500 a month, add that to your bottom line, then you've got to do the things necessary to add $500 to your bottom line. That's it. You've got to know the things to do to add that money to your bottom line. So the top four excuses, you got to look at this screen and go, okay, which one of these have I allowed to stop me from getting where I want to go? Is it money? Is it time? Is it the excuse of connections? Or is it the excuse of knowledge? Let's keep it moving. All right, step three, get committed. Your mindset has to be ain't no mountain high enough. All right? Uh, you got to put the end in there. But ain't no mountain high enough. You got to figure out a way to do it. 
no river wide enough, no mountain high enough. If you want it, you've got to get committed. That's it. It is that simple. You can't halfway run a marathon. You've got to figure out and decide that you're going to do it. You can't halfway run a business and expect it to be successful. You've got to go out there and do it. Okay? So let's talk about how to stop commitment phobia. Here's what you're going to do. For the next 30 days, you're going to do something every single day. I don't know what it is. I don't know what, what that's going to be for you. Is it writing in a journal? Is it running? Is it walking two blocks? Is it calling someone you haven't spoken to in 30 years? Is it sending an email? I don't know what it is. You need to experience what it's like to do something every single day. The problem with people and the reason that people can't achieve their goals or, or even begin to turn their passion into profits is that they don't have the discipline of consistency. You need the discipline of consistency to be able to have success. That's it. And because you haven't done something consistently, there is a signal going off in your head that you can't do something. You can't accomplish this. You know you're not going to do that. There's no use in you even start to diet. You know you're not going to do it. I don't even know why you try to start a business. You know you're not going to do it. That's what happens. Because you don't have the discipline of consistency. See, the great thing about being an athlete glad I'm, I made the decision to do that, made that choice, is that there are certain things we have to do every single day to be at the level that's expected of us. You got to do it every single day. You got to go to practice. You got to lift weights. You got to run. You got to eat well. You have to do these things every single day. So there is that discipline that a lot of athletes have, at least while they're in college or high school or when they're playing pro, because that's a part of who you are. But what it does, what it has given me in the world of business is this confidence that, oh, come on, you've done harder things than this. You can do this every day. You can do it. So I want you guys to, to really think about how you've been phobic in the area of commitment. And you need to do something every day for the next 30 days. I don't know what it's going to be. Figure it out. What are you going to do for the next 30 days? All right, then you're going to tell someone what you're doing for the next 30 days. Got it? Here's where accountability comes in. So basically, let's say if you wanted to walk a mile a day, not only are you going to do it and know it just that you're going to do it, you're going to tell someone you're going to do it for the next 30 days. And then you're going to publish what you're doing for the next 30 days. See, it's one thing to say, okay, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to eat better for the next 30 days. And only you know about it. It takes that goal up a different level when there's accountability factored into it. So now you're going to tell someone what you're doing for the next 30 days. And then we're going to take it up another level because now you're going to publish what you're doing for the next 30 days. And you're saying, okay, well, why do I need to publish it, Fran? Because I want to raise the exposure level. I want to raise the exposure level that you're dealing with. It's not just enough to tell your spouse or your friend or your, your mother or your father or whatever. No, I want you to publish it to the world. Let us know what you're doing for the next 30 days. Right? You will be revealed. Who you are will be revealed. The shortages, your shortages in your character is going to be revealed once you have to publish what you're doing. Because here's what's going to happen. When we're exposed, who we really are shows up. Right? I can make these big promises to the people who love and care for me all day long and know but when I tell the world that I'm doing it guess what who I am is revealed doesn't mean that I'm going to do it who I am will be revealed so I need you guys to understand that publish what you're doing publish it tell people what you're doing and watch what happens with you watch who shows up for you Either you're going to get scared because people are going to come out of the woodworks and start challenging you to do what you want to do or they're going to encourage you. Your fear of failure or your fear of success will show up once you publish who you are. Once you publish what you're doing, your fear of failure or your fear of success will show up. All right, you're going to ask for help. This is a biggie. Again, very important that you do every single bit that I'm asking you to do. You're going to ask for help on your commitment for the next 30 days. 
All right. If that means that you want somebody to text you every day and say, hey, have you run or did you have your tomato today? I don't know what your ask for help is going to be. This is very important because a lot of times as an entrepreneur or anybody, whether you're a committed entrepreneur or someone who's aspiring to be an entrepreneur, a lot of times we have a very difficult time letting people know that we need help. And there is absolutely no way you're going to be able to build what you think you want to build unless you're willing to ask for help. So you're going to ask for help on your commitment for the next 30 days. Every day, hey, could you give me a call? Let, give me a call and, and ask me if I, if I built that app. Give me a call and ask me if I wrote in my journal. Give me a call or shoot me a text or shoot me an email and ask me. You're going to ask for help. Hey, I don't know where to find this. Can you point me in the right direction? Hey, I'm not sure about how to do this. Can you give me some insight? Ask for help. All right. There it is. There's my step four. <laughs> All right. Getting started. Here we go. The start stops most people. All right. The start stops most people. So here's what I want to ask you. When you are where you want to be, how will you feel? Who will you be able to help? How will you be able to contribute economically? And how will your change impact your legacy? All right. When you are where you want to be, how will you feel? Who will you be able to help? How will you be able to contribute economically? And how will your change impact your legacy? All right. But most importantly, I want you to see something at the top. that The start stops most people. Now. Most of you will never get started because you're so afraid of making a mistake. Now, I don't know what just happened with my slides, quite honestly. I don't know what happened. But I'm not going to let that stop me, right? It's not big enough to stop what I have to say to you. Stuff will happen. You will do a webinar. You will do a presentation. You will write a book. You will have a typo. You will stumble over your words. People will talk about you. You'll have keyboard gangsters talking about you online. Stuff is going to happen. But you cannot allow that to get in the way of your purpose. You just can't do it. Right? There are keyboard thugs out there. There are people who will say things about you online who would never have the courage to say those things to you in your face. They will write things that are untrue about you. That is a reality. That is a world that we live in. The start stops most people. You can't allow potential failure to stop you from having imagine, unimaginable success. You can't allow potential hiccups in technology to get in your way. It will happen. People will get over it. They will forgive it. It's not that deep. The start stops most people. You don't have to get it perfect. You don't have to get it right all the time. You just have to come from the right place in your heart. Right? you got to put out stuff that, that helps people, that helps to move them farther ahead in their dreams and with their legacy. That's what you have to do. Okay, So I went off a little diatribe there because I know that some of you listening to me, some of you got this. You're ready. You're going to go for it. You're not going to worry about the mistakes. But there are some of you who are listening to me right now who are thinking, oh, there's this thing I really want to do, but I'm so afraid of making a mistake. I'm so afraid of my, my computer freezing in the middle of my presentation. Who cares? Not that deep. All right, so now we can focus back on this. When you are where you want to be, I want you to think about how you're going to feel. I want you to think about who you'll be able to help. I want you to think about how you're going to be able to contribute economically. And how will the change that you're making impact your legacy? When you are where you want to be, those four questions are very important. How will you feel? Who will you be able to help? How will you be able to contribute economically? Whether that's you helping a cause or helping yourself. It doesn't matter. Money is good. How will your change impact your legacy? All right. And then step five, get paid. In order to get paid, you got to have the right mind, the right plan, the right hustle, and the right support. Okay? You got to have the right mindset. Yes, it is possible. I want to dispel one myth. It is possible to do the right thing before you think in the right way and still get what you want. 
That's a reality. But it's very difficult to sustain success over the long haul if you don't have the right mindset. Let me repeat that. Let me give you a better example. People who win the lottery, not all of them, sometimes people who win the lottery are broke within one year because they didn't have the right mindset about their wealth. It's been proven time and time again. Okay, so it's not enough just to do the right thing. Sometimes doing the right thing can precede thinking the right way. But what I'm sharing with you today is what I know based on my own life and based on the, the millions of people that I've helped either as a, as a life coach or a business coach. If your mind is right, it's a lot easier to sustain what you've built. So get the right mind. And then you get the right plan. So if you're looking to turn your purpose and your passion into profit as a business, as a nonprofit, social entrepreneurship, whatever it is you want to do, get the right mindset and then get the right plan. But even once you get the right plan, you got to have the right hustle. And what I mean by the right hustle is like you've got to stay on your grind daily. It is a day in, day out thing. There have been times, there have been projects that I've worked on that, that people were equally talented, people were more experienced, whatever it is, but I had the right hustle. I got the right hustle. You are not going to out-hustle me. You're not going to out-compete me. You're not going to out-work me. And then once you get that, having the right support is critical. Nobody works in a, in a vacuum. Whether you're an introvert or consider yourself an extrovert, you got to have people supporting you. And you got to get real about the kind of support that you have. If the support from the folks you live with is not kind of keeping you engaged, then you need to seek out additional support. That's a reality. Sometimes people succeed in spite of the people that they're married to or involved with. I mean, it's not the ideal situation because you spend most of your life with those people, but you got to get real about who your support system is. And you can't be afraid to say, I got to find some support. I got to, if my mother is not doing it, if my spouse is not doing it, if my brother or my, well, whoever it is, if, if they're not providing the kind of support that I need, I've got to find the right kind of support because I'm not going to give up on this dream. I'm not going to give up on my passion. Okay. All right. So here's how I want you to get out of the gate fast. You're going to do a documentary and don't get nervous. I'm not talking about a full fledged HD high definition documentary. I'm talking about a low level documentary that we all have the tools and access to tools and resources to do. Okay. So my no more excuses plan for turning your passion and pro uh, pr passion and purpose into profits is simple. You're going to set it up with one of these vehicles. You're going to either set up a Facebook page or a WordPress blog or a blog talk radio show or a YouTube channel. Okay. Now what I've attempted to do here was to tap into the, the kinds of people, the different kinds of people that you guys can possibly be. Facebook page, clearly if you, if you publish it on your Facebook page, you're opening up to the world, which is a great way of course to bring in other people, inspire other people and have people get inspired by what you're doing and also bring those people in time into what you're doing and see how they can support you. That's a great thing about a Facebook page. WordPress blog, you can go to wordpress.com or if you are familiar with the, the self-hosted WordPress blogs, you go to wordpress.org and you set that up on your own hosting. This is an opportunity for you to just basically journal online about the next 30 days. Blog talk radio show, go to blogtalk.com. You can set up a 30 minute radio show for free. This again gives you an audience, gives you the opportunity to share your journey with people who may or may not be going through the same thing, okay? Gives you another platform. That's for people who want to be heard, not necessarily seen. YouTube channel, clearly. You put it on YouTube, you don't mind getting on camera and sharing it and showing it. Or you could be doing the way I'm doing right now, which is a, a, a screencast where you're doing like a PowerPoint or a keynote if you're a Mac person and you never come on camera. Okay, so four things you're going to do. One of these four. Do not do all four of them. Just pick one. 
Facebook page, a WordPress blog, a blog talk radio show, or a YouTube channel. Okay? No more excuses. This is your opportunity to publish this next 30 days for you turning your purpose and your passion into profits. All right? And then here's what's going to happen when you start sharing your progress. You're going to be a part of a movement of people who are, frankly, just on fire. They're on fire with change. They're on fire with, with turning their passion and their purpose into profit. You're also going to be a part of a community of people who support each other. I know that's going to happen. You're going to be able to tap into people that you've never met, people that you need and people who need you and need what you have in terms of your expertise to make it happen. You're also going to become a, a network of businesses that help their communities. I mean, I really believe that the people who are listening to this and watching this right now are people who are agents of change. They are the people who go out there in their communities or in the global community in terms of the planet and just really make things happen. And then you're going to become a band of social entrepreneurs that are destined to affect great and global change. That's what I believe will happen once you join us on this journey, okay? You're gonna become a movement of people who are on fire. You're gonna become a part of a community of people who support each other, a network of businesses that are gonna be developed that help their communities. And then the social entrepreneurship, this commitment to, to incredible change that will have an impact globally. And then finally, I want you to share your progress at 31daymentor.com, okay? If you go there, you'll see just a simple blog. That is a WordPress blog simple blog where you can share your progress every single day if you want to if you want us to be a part of your accountability team then that's what that will be about okay it has been my pleasure and my honor to kick off 2000 is that yeah 2013 with you <laughs> and i'm looking forward to hearing about your amazing success your progress your challenges as well and i uh, look forward to seeing you over at 31 day mentor take care have a great week everybody